for a simply supported beam on two n supports the bending moment is maximum usually on the supports always at mid span where there is no shear force where the deflection is maximum they have asked the maximum bending moment occurring section uh, okay it is a case of simply supported beam and this question is being asked in 1989 gate for one mark okay we must know the relation between load intensity shear force shear force and bending moment here you can see negative load intensity is equal to the slope of the shear force curve at a particular cross section x uh, we can say this as load intensity at x is equal to slope of shear force curve at x there will be an sfd and for that sfd we will be having a shear force curve and that curve will be having a slope and that slope can may be varying slope and for that particular cross section like x there will be a particular slope and this slope is equated to the load intensity at that particular cross section so since there is a negative sign we will be getting fa minus fb is equal to uh, integrating from lower limit a to b wx dx uh, so this resembles the area of a loading diagram from a to b similarly this can be evaluated as mb minus ma is equal to a to b fx dx area of shear force diagram a to b uh, here you can understand the relation between bending moment and shear force uh, sometimes they will be giving uh, bending moment at a particular cross section and they will be giving the shear force diagram and they will be asking the bending moment at a, another cross section like a uh, so using this relation we can find that you must remember the second equation particularly the second equation is where invalid in case of uh, in the presence of uniformly distributed moments udm and concentrated moments otherwise it is applicable in all cases here it is a generalized case they haven't stated about the loading condition so we can consider this equation but actually it is not not valid in this particular case but since it is a generalized condition and there is no other options which are suitable, we must consider, that is we must consider this uh, equation. So, we know that mathematically, uh, the bending moment, a slope of a bending moment or a slope of a particular curve, if equated to zero, we will be getting a um, stationary point. Uh, that stationary point is used to determine the maximum and minimum. So, by equating dmx by dx is equal to zero, we may get maximum or minimum. So, there is a possibility of getting maximum when shear force is equated to zero, which becomes dmx by dx is equal to zero. So, the answer is where there is no shear force, while others are specific for particular loading. Uh, in one particular loading, there is a possibility that uh, at the support, the bending moment is zero. Sometimes it may be at uh, uh, mid span, sometimes uh, it may be where the deflection is maximum. But this is the most generalized, appropriate and generalized condition. So, where there is no shear force is the most appropriate answer and these two relations are uh, very important to be remembered. A block of steel is loaded by a tangential force on its top surface while the bottom surface is held rigidly. The deformation of the block is due to. They have asked the deformation reason, that is the thing which causes deformation. It may be shear, it may be bending, it may be both due to shear and bending, it may be due to torsion. And this question is a 1992 gate one more question. Okay, I have demonstrated it with a pick. If you apply a force, there is a possibility of shearing. This is referred to as shearing. That is from the linear element, perpendicular linear element, there is a slight deflection. That is shearing and this is referred to as a, um, deformation due to shear. And this is due to bending. There is a slight bending of this a section. Deformation due to bending. So, both shear and bending causes deformation here. So, C is the right answer. It is a very simple one more question. A concentrated load P acts on a simply supported beam of span L at a distance L by 3 from the left support. The bending moment at the point of application of the load is given by. They have asked the bending moment at the point of application of load. That is where P is applied. It is a 1993 gate one more question and the options are as here. Okay, here I have drawn the uh, pictorial representation of this uh, particular condition. You can see that P is applied at a distance L by 3 from the left support. Okay, if P is applied in this way, we must find the reaction set first. We know that 
static equilibrium e conditions are used for uh, finding the reactions so we are using summation of vertical forces is equal to zero we will be getting ra plus rb is equal to p ra refers to reaction at a rb refers to reaction at b and also we know that summation of moment at a is equal to zero we can also take summation of moment at b is all uh, equal to zero uh, so by taking summation of moment at a is equal to zero we will be getting p this is clockwise so p into l by 3 while minus rb will be acting opposite to this applied load so minus rb into l will be equated to 0 so you will be getting rb as p by 3 if rb is p by 3 using this equation you can find that ra is 2p by 3 okay you have found the reactions here we must know the bending moment at p bending moment at p can be found by uh, either finding the moment towards the right or on the left hand side of this particular cross section where the load is applied. Here I am considering this side that is along the left side. So Ra into L by 3. Ra you know 2P by 3 into L by 3 you will be getting 2P L by 9. I will also uh, say this if Rb you must multiply uh, if it is Rb L by L minus L by 3 will be 2L by 3. So Rb into 2L by 3. Rb is P by 3. 2L by 3 into P by 3 you will be getting 2PL by 9. You can see both gives the same answer. And you can see the bending moment is actually sagging bending moment. Sagging means the top surface gets contracted. That is you will be getting a smiley. Yes. Smiley. Yes. So it is. Sorry. Sagging. Sagging bending moment. Smiley. If it is uh, hogging it will be opposite. Hogging. H. Uh, sagging is S. A cantilever beam carries the anti-symmetric load shown where W0 is the peak intensity of the distributed load. Qualitatively, the correct bending moment diagram for this beam is. They have asked qualitatively the correct bending moment, which means there is no magnitude involved. They have just asked the uh, diagrammatically uh, what is the correct bending moment diagram. Okay, you can see the load intensity first it is decreasing and then it is increasing. So, we need to find the shear force diagram from which using the relations which you have learnt in the first question that is uh, minus wx is equal to dfx by dx and uh, uh, mx is equal to uh, sorry uh, fx is equal to dmx by dx here you can see shear force at b and uh, you can calculate using this sorry uh, here it is b here but i have assumed b at the mid and c at the end um, at B, shear force, that is at the midpoint, you will be getting uh, minus WL by D. Uh, we know that when there is a UVL or UDL, you need to find the total area and the centroid of this particular area because the load will be assumed to be acting at this particular centroid, which is actually in case of a, a triangle, uh, that is right angled triangle, uh, the centroid is at 2L by 3 from this end or l by 3 from the 90 degree end so from l by 3 you have applied this uh, since it is upwards you have applied the total area will be w naught into l uh, half of uh, base into height as you know the formula for area of a triangle so w l by 2 similarly you will be getting this you can see at b as i told you earlier if you need to find the shear force at b we have to see either on the right hand side or on the left hand side. Just by seeing on the right hand side, you can see that W will be 2, it is anticlockwise. Shear force in anticlockwise direction is negative. So, S of at B is minus W will be 2. But if you consider C, there is no load. Towards the right hand side, there is no load. Towards the left hand side, if you see W will be 2 and W will be 2 gets cancelled. So, at C is 0 and at A, you can see uh, both W L by 2 and W L by 2 gets cancelled. So at A and C, S F is 0. Just by putting the value and drawing the diagram, you will be getting the shear force diagram as in this way. Here you can see the shear force diagram is increasing from A to B and then decreasing. So for increase, uh, according to the relations which you have learned in the first question, if it is increasing, the slope for bending moment diagram must be increasing. This is actually a parabola which is increasing slope. Similarly, for decreasing slope, it will be like this. A yes, easier way to remember is that um, since it is decreasing, you can see uh, 
uh, x will be in the bottom line. We know that in general graph, x will be the bottom line and y will be the vertical line. It is rim limiting the x value. If it is, we know that slope is dy by dx. It is limiting the x value. If it is limiting the x value, dy by dx will be increasing. Similarly, here you can see it is not limiting the x value. So, x value is increasing. Here you can see it is crossing. Here it is increasing. So, x value increases, then dy by dx will be decreasing. So, it is decreasing slope. It is an easier way to remember. So, these two must be joined to form the bending moment diagram. Similar to this combination, there is just C only. So, C is the answer because they have asked just qualitatively. A cantilever beam has a square cross section of 10 millimeter cross 10 millimeter. It carries a transverse load of 10 newton. If uh, a load acts uh, parallel to the cross section, it is referred to as a transverse load. Considering only the bottom fibers of the beam, bottom fibers refers to the bottom, uh, uh, bottom, uh, what to say, bottom straight lines, uh, uh, straight parts of the beam which are parallel to the longitudinal axis are referred to as bottom fibers of the beam. Uh, it is referred to as uh, several fibers are connected to form the beam. Uh, the correct representation of the longitudinal variation of the bending stresses. Always the bending stress variation will be linear. Remember that. Sigma B varies linearly from fiber to fiber in a cross section. As I said earlier, here are the options and this is a 2005 gate to more questions. Okay, first we must know Sigma B that is bending stress varies linearly from fiber to fiber in a cross section. We know that uh, by pure bending equation that Bending stress is equal to bending moment into uh, the distance of the particular fiber from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia. So, y by i, uh, it can be written as 1 by z and e, that is section modulus about the neutral axis. Here you can see it is 10 Newton at the midpoint. So, the maximum possible moment, we have to consider the maximum possible moment because they have asked the bottom fibers. Always remember in case of bending, bottom fibers and uh, top fibers will be experiencing the maximum load. Uh, so, we are finding the maximum moment. 10 into 1 total will be the uh, maximum moment, 10 Newton meter. Because if it is considered at this cross section, it will be 10 into 0.5. So, it will be 5 Newton meter only. But if it is considered at this point, it will be, uh, in case of cantilever beam, it will be at the fixed end. That is maximum bending moment will be at the fixed end. So, we are considering 10 Newton meter. And we know that for a square cross section, Z and A is given as A cube by 6. So, we know that uh, 10 Newton into 1 meter and this A cube by 6 the loading causes shear and bending. Actually, this 10 Newton, as we have seen in the second question about when a rigidly held bore is um, applied with a tangential force, uh, transverse loads are tangential. Uh, so, we will be getting shear and bending. Here it is shear and bending, but we have considered only bending. Uh, so, we have taken this particular equation and we have solved. Okay, just by substituting here, we will be getting the bending stress. Uh, we can see that 10 Newton meter. Here we will be substituting 10 Newton meter for Z and A, A cube by 6, A is in millimeter. So, by converting this into uh, millimeter, you will be getting 10,000 divided by A cube 10. So, it will be 1000, 1000 divided by 6, 10,000 by 1000, it will be 10. Uh, 6 will be going up, 6 into 10, you will be getting 60 megapascal. And we know that sigma B varies linearly. And both comes 60 and linear variation, you can see at option A only. So, option A suits the best. You can see uh, always in neutral axis, that better stress will be zero. So, it is zero here. A simply supported beam of length L is subjected to a varying distributed load sin 3 pi x by L Newton per meter where the distance x is measured from the left support. The magnitude of the vertical reaction force in Newton at the left support is uh, just by seeing this question, you can imagine the condition. I haven't drawn the diagram because it is left to you to draw the diagram and to imagine the question. Okay, the magnitude of the vertical reaction force is being asked at the, particularly at the left support. It is a 2013 two mark question. Okay, in case of uniformly varying load, 
and also in case of uniformly distributed load as we have discussed earlier we have to concentrate the total load at the uh, centroid of that particular uh, cross section of loading so here total load is calculated as uh, 0 to L sin 3 by x by L this is the variation curve within this uh, uh, if you integrate you will be getting the area which is equal to the total load so just by integrating sin 3 pi x by L you will be getting minus cos 3 pi x by L divided by 3 pi by L so it will be 0 to L lower limit and upper limit uh, you are taking L by 3 pi outside and if you substitute L here you will be getting minus cos 3 pi plus cos 0 we know that cos of odd pi is always minus 1 so minus of minus 1 1 cos 0 is 1 you will be getting 2L by 3 pi since it is sine curve we know that sine curve is symmetric so the loading becomes automatically symmetric it is 3 pi x so it will be like 3 uh, 1 pi and then another pi and then another pi so it will be like uh, if it is uh, consider this SS Academy uh, length as a simply supported beam you will be having the uh, loading as like this like the cursor moves it will be like this so it is symmetric you can see that it is symmetric always sine curve is symmetric so thus at both the supports you will be getting equal loading that is equal reaction so you can divide it by 2 and you will be getting l by 3 pi so the answer is b l by 3 pi a cantilever beam op is connected to another beam pq with a pin joint as shown in the figure a load of 10 kN is applied at the midpoint of PQ. The magnitude of bending moment in kN meter at the fixed end O is. They have asked the bending moment at O. This type of beam is referred to as a compound beam. Here you can see P is referred to as internal or unsupported hinge. Always at this point, uh, the bending moment will be zero. It is considered as a uh, point of contraflexor or point of inflection or a point of virtual hinge. All refers to the same meaning that at this particular point, either the bending moment changes sign or it becomes zero. Okay, um, whenever such type of beam is given, we must split according to the loading. So, if 10 kN is applied, this particular beam will be opposing this load in this up because uh, accents and reaction occur on different bodies. So, this will be exerting an upward force. So, there will be a reaction RP and this loading on this uh, particular beam will uh, make a reaction on this. So, RP is acting here. Here you can see the diagram. So, uh, due to this RP, there will be an upward force and uh, since it is acting at a distance, RP into 2 will be forming a moment uh, which will be opposed here. And here you can see 10 kN meter is at the midpoint. As we know, if it is symmetric, the loading will be equally distributed. So for RP and RQ, it is 5 kN. 5 kN. So you, you have found that RP is 5 kN. So if it is acting here, RP into 2 will be the moment at O. So, bending moment is equal to 5 into 2, 10 kN meter. For the overhanging beam shown in figure, the magnitude of maximum bending moment in kN meter is. Uh, here you can see it is a one sided overhanging beam and it is a 2015 2 marks question being asked in uh, set 3 gate paper. Okay, it is an overhanging beam and they have asked the maximum bending moment overall the maximum bending moment okay first in uh, in this case we must determine the reactions and here you can see there will be a vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction in case of a pin joint a triangle refers to a pin joint whereas this refers to a roller support and this roller support you will be having only vertical reaction and since there is no horizontal loads you will be uh, you will not be having any uh, uh, horizontal reaction so we can directly say that uh, summation of vertical forces is equal to zero which is a static equilibrium equation so r a plus r b is equal to we know that in case of udl and uvl the total load must be uh, the area of the udl or uvl concentrated at the uh, centroid in this case it is midpoint so r a plus r b is equal to 4 into 10 plus we have an additional loading so it is 20 kilonewton 
so uh, and uh, we also uh, should find uh, with this particular equation we cannot find uh, r a and r b so we have to go for uh, summation of moments is equal to zero you can take a summation of moment at b is equal to zero or a is equal to zero so by taking at uh, a is equal to zero you will be getting r b into clockwise moment which is r b into four uh, which is equal to um, four into ten it will be concentrated at the midpoint so forty kilo newton uh which will be concentrated at the midpoint so it is at 2 meter so 4 into 10 into 2 plus 20 into 4 plus 2 6 up so you'll be getting rb as 50 kilo newton and ra as 10 kilo newton uh here we are going to see an interesting section that is a tricky section where uh, you have to find the bending moment equation let us consider a cross section x uh, at a distance x, x, x. Let us consider a cross section x, x. That is at a distance x from reaction A, uh, reaction support A. So we have to find bending moment at this cross section. Then we can uh, by substituting the value of x from uh, here to here, you will be getting the bending moment at all points here. And this equation is this particular equation derived is applicable only between A to B because the loading ends here and here you can see a different loading so you must be applying this only for this particular uh, uh, region so mx is equal to considering this cross section let it be at a distance x so it will be ra into x ra into x minus 10 into x squared by 2 let me say how it came uh, if it is considered here that is x x cross section at a distance x here will be some uniformly distributed load this loading can be obtained by uh, finding the area which is 10 into x because 10 is the uniformly distributed load 10 into x you will be getting the load which will be acting at the midpoint of this x so 10 x into x by 2 you will be getting 10 x squared by 2 so at this x cross section you will be getting r a into x minus 10x into x by 2 which is 10x minus pi x squared remember this particular equation is applicable only here to here here you can use uh, the mathematical equation that uh, just by um, uh, what to say just by uh, differentiating and equating to zero you cannot get uh, the maximum value this is because negative maximum is also referred to as maximum bending moment that is hogging bending moment always hogging is taken as negative but here if you use that mathematical concept negative maximum will be considered as minimum only so it will be difficult so you can just substitute the end conditions like if instead of x if you substitute 1 you will be getting 10 into 1 minus 5 into 1 you will be getting 5 kilo newton water similarly you will be uh, substituting every point and if you substitute 4 you will be getting 40 kilo newton meter uh, and also if you consider any point here you can consider 20 into uh, for example you are considering here 20 into 1 you will be getting 20 and the maximum will be here only so eventually you can understand that 40 comes out to be the maximum bending moment the value of moment of inertia of the section shown in the figure about the axis xx is it is a moment of inertia question uh, this calculation will be uh, useful in uh, bending moment calculations okay it is a 2015 two mark question being asked in set 3 gate paper mm, to find the moment of inertia of this cross section we can calculate it as uh, by considering the whole section that is a solid section moment of inertia and by subtracting this hollow section's moment of inertia, we will be getting the final moment of inertia. So, Ixx of solid minus Ixx of uh, hollow sections. We know that for a rectangular uh, cross section, the moment of inertia is given as Bd cube by 12. Uh, since, uh, since it is about uh, this section, it is easy to remember in this way. If it is about uh, uh, an axis like this, the parallel dimension is taken as a single value that is 60 power 1 and the other dimension is taken as power 3. So it is 120, 120 power 3 divided by 12. If it is y, y, you can take it as uh, 120 into 60 cube by 12. Okay, minus of uh, 
uh, both are uh, symmetrical so we can we are considering only this particular cross section and we are finding the moment of inertia and we are multiplying it by 2 uh, it is here we are using the parallel axis theorem we know that according to parallel axis theorem one of the uh, axis uh, uh, against which we are determining uh, must be parallel to one of the centroidal axis here you can see for the square uh, cross section the horizontal centroidal axis is the parallel one so about horizontal centroidal axis the moment of inertia is determined which is a power 4 by 12 uh, from this dimensions you can find that 30 cross 30 so 30 power 4 which is 30 into 30 power 3 divided by 12 plus uh, the area that is 30 squared into the distance of the a section about which uh, moment of inertia has to be considered from the horizontal centroidal axis square that is here you can see 30 is the distance so 30 squared by using parallel axis theorem and this concept you can find the uh, moment of inertia which is 6.8850 into 10 power 6 millimeter per pole. For a loaded cantilever beam of uniform cross section, the bending moment in Newton millimeter along the length is they have given an equation m of x is equal to 5x squared plus 10x, where x is the distance in millimeter measured from the free end of the beam. The magnitude of shear force in the cross section at x is equal to 10 mm is they asked the magnitude of shear force in Newton. It is a 2017 one mark set to question. Uh, we have studied it earlier that uh, mm, shear force at a cross section is equal to the slope of the uh, BMD uh, BMD curve at that cross section. So just by uh, differentiating mx, we will be getting 10x plus 10, and uh, they have given the distance as 10 millimeter. So 10x plus 10 by substituting instead of x10, we will be getting 110 as the answer. It is a simple one more question.